Of course. This is bound to be informative. I'm just disappointed I never had a chance to see the original Well of Souls. I believe our new friend has a disturbing path of living shadow to offer you. By all means, be my guest. After you. I hope you're ready for this. I believe our new... This island smells... Like death. Stay behind me. This is no social visit. Keep your wits sharp. Just as Hughes thought, Ventrinio used the same wards in their old lab. This will be quick. The energy from the Well of Souls is overwhelming. Damn it! It's wrong! Like our rat is caught in a trap. I'm sure he'd be happy to help whoever saves him. Here's where we part ways. I'll stop the lads at the stairwell. You get upstairs and retrieve Ventrinio. Shouldn't be hard to find him. Keep moving up and follow the cowardly shrieking. I'll hold this staircase. Move! Who 
who's down there. Show yourself. <laughs> Damn it all! I don't care who you are. Get up here!
When you get up, try not to look directly in the alignment. You show up, and now the Laz are... Wait. What? Is you? You're alive. But I saw you die. I'm Ventrinian, of course. Don't you remember me? You were my assistant here at the Well of Souls. You were going to help me change the world. But of course, that was before you died. You were the best assistant I ever had. Who else could have helped me get into Alabastra? Who else had that ambition? We got more than enough prisoner, but you wanted to crack down the power source, even if it meant sneaking right onto Gadflow's nose. I spent days trying to recover your body, but I never expected to find you alive, or for you to return. Speaking of which, you did not return anyway. Of course you did. You went there to steal Prismere to power the well. You wanted to go after the source of the Prismere itself. You went off, geared for war, sneaking into Bale itself. Damn fool! Better chance of bringing you back from the dead than I had of changing your mind. But I wasn't able to do either. What? That's impossible. You were attuned at this well. You've never even set foot in his lap. Ha! Hughes is a joke. He doesn't have the stomach for this work. Don't try waking the dead if you're not ready to make a few corpses, I say. But the well is coming down around us. Quick! I've got to slow the energy and shut this thing down. And don't... Oh, damn it all! Here they come! Hold them off! The lairs are here! Pull them off while I try to stop the flow of energy to the well.
talk with... All my work, gone. Damn it all! But, uh, <laughs> at least we're still alive. Once again, I triumph over death itself. Going back into Alabastra. Well, I still have a way in, but it's more dangerous now than the last time we went. I'll need more prisoner if I'm to rebuild the well. And I suppose I owe you something for saving my life. Perhaps this talisman can help you. It's a little something I salvaged from the debris. It might just help against whatever killed you the first time. We got in with a little help, of course. See, it's all because of Callus Dren, the defender of Pry. In his house, no one can stand before him. None can even approach, unless you have my little secret. Patience, patience. You'll have it soon enough. I'm going to have to dig it out of the rubble of the tower. Go to the field of Huber, and I'll meet you there. And if you value your life, do not approach Dren. I know the type. Lucky youth peaked early, then crawled into a bottle and waited to die. I'm impressed you dragged him away from that bottle, but I wouldn't expect him to do any heavy thinking. You mean your deadly little shadow? I know her type. All smiles now, but it's just so she can get close enough to stick her knives in you. After an unfortunate incident with the Templars, Octian decided to move my work someplace a little further from the public eye. We both felt that an island in another land behind the front lines of a war might just be far enough from prying eyes. Dren, defender of pride. One of twin defenders, quite powerful in their homes. But did you know they were also entirely immune to each other's powers? And it seems the Defender of Valor quite disappeared when her house fell. Imagine how useful she would have been if she were here today. Simple bone soldiers, easy enough for any decent mage to build and animate. They're not really alive any more than a puppet is. Gadflow's got an empire built on Prismere. Think of all the power he's sitting on, and he's wasting it on swords and bows. Elegant fools, all of them. At least we could sneak past them when they were overconfident. Now that the army's at their gate, they'll be watching for us. He wasn't fit to hold my crucible, much less carry on my work. He could barely even stand to cut open a warm corpse for study. I can't imagine the reason you came back in his well instead of mine. Probably some freak attunement transfer. A horrible, messy, ugly place. Too dark to keep bodies preserved and too hot to keep them from stinking. Oh, to be back in a cave and a tear. Partial successes at best. They remember how to fight, but that's about all they're good for. Name them after an old nursery rhyme. Damn things are always moaning all the time. I thought it might shut them up to give them a name. You don't remember it? Well, why dredge up the past? After all, you're fine now, aren't you? You're... you're not the type to hold a grudge, right? You were my assistant in the well, and a damned good one at that. Octian hired you personally, said you were especially resourceful, and left it at that. I didn't know anything about you before you worked for me, and I knew better than to ask. You didn't like talking about yourself. Actually, you didn't like much of anything. Honestly, you were a terror to be around. But you've changed. I can tell. 
Before you died, you would never have been this diplomatic. You probably would have knifed me for answers by now. Oh, oh, speaking of which, you left this in your room before you died. Take it, take it. We were in Alabastra, and I never thought it'd be dangerous. At least, not very. Oh, don't give me that look. Accidents happen. You can't make an omelette without leaving a few corpses. Fine. We were collecting Prismere and Alabastra. We needed it to power the well, of course. And you got a wild idea to track down the source of the power. I tried to stop you. I really did. But you decided to sneak into Amethyn, and I wasn't about to get killed along with you. I spent days trying to get your corpse back, but to no avail. Much as I hate to admit it, I should thank Hughes for succeeding where I failed. Octian! The man lacked vision. Can you believe all he wanted was his own personal immortality machine? Such a narrow-minded goal for a Templar. Still, he wasn't squeamish about what had to be done in order to develop the well. I suppose he paid well, too, if you'd consider that any reason to pursue the sciences. We needed tremendous quantities of Prismere to fuel the well, but it's almost unheard of outside of Alabastra so we had to sneak in to gather our own. My name is Ventrinio Dessalini, and I am Professor Emeritus Abscondus of Postmortem Studies at the Odessa University. Of course, that was all before I began work on the Well of Souls. Such an important undertaking doesn't leave much time for other pursuits, you know. The Well of Souls is a noble project. Yes, sacrifices have been made. Laws have been broken. People have died. And they will continue to die. Don't you see? That's exactly what I'm trying to prevent. How many have died in this war? Thousands. The bodies are shoulder deep on the battlefields, but for trying to cure it, they call me a monster? Just go to the Field of Huber and wait for me. I'll meet you down there once I can find this damned essence. Get going, and remember, don't go near Dread until I get there.
homeless. Stay. It's your funeral. Well, I expected to see a lot of things out here in Kaled, but not the hero of Melson Shear. What brings you this far south? I am Sergeant Odai, twice decorated officer and now civilian escort. I guess you could say that I'm really working my way up the chain of command. Oh, I never should have ended up here. My family's ship was tossed into the cliffs during a storm, and I was the only survivor. The Ancillas saved me. They raised me as one of their own. I may not be native to these lands, but they are the closest thing I've ever had to a home. No one has called me by my given name in years. I'm just Sergeant now. Been that way for a long while. I used to be a healer, but lost my gifts when the war came. Something about all the carnage, the death, it bled the magic right out of me. So I took up a sword. It was all I could do. We all need to carry our own weight in this tragedy. And mine is to fight. I have allowed two citizens to travel within my unit, which I probably should not do. But I have a weakness for those in need. Guess it comes from my past as a healer. Oh, Brune the Bard is not so bad. I actually knew him as a kid, if you can believe that. He's a little excitable, but harmless. I cannot say the same about Alof the Hunter. Strange sort, that one. He insists on staying outside our camp. Says we stand in the way of his quarry. To each his own. Farewell. Hello. Hail, adventurer. I am Bruin the Bard, spinner of stories, seeker of adventure. Allow me to welcome you to the Kaled Coast, haven to the wise and wicked. These brave soldiers, the finest of the Arfar armies, they escorted me all the way from Melsenshir to these verdant lands. Alas, our journey together has come to an end. But there is still adventure to be had, so join me. If not, then I bid you fair warning. Your journey shall be far less exciting without this storyteller at hand. The wonderful gentlemen and ladies of the Alpha armies have been kind enough to act as my loyal escorts. All the way from Melsenshir, and before that, Erethel. Without these good hearty folk, I never would have survived. The voyage across the sea would have been enough to sink my spirits. Brune was the name given to me by my mother, a lovely daughter of the full moon, a skin like the glow of alabastra. Long ago, I was the court bard of Castle Gustir, the teller of tales, the spinner of stories. But when the Bolgan invaded, well, they had no need of my expertise. This lush land was once the royal domain of two great Alpha families, the Ancillas and the Gastiers, the most powerful of bloodlines and the most bitter of enemies. For centuries, the two houses warred over the coast. So enamored were they with each other that they blinded themselves to the real threat. And so the Bolgan came and conquered. The houses fell before them. One might say they were toppled by their pride. 
Lord Aaron Gastir was a very wealthy lord and a powerful landowner. I don't care to speak much more on the subject, thank you. A wise question, and a fair one. As bard of the Gastir court, I know all the tales of the Caled coast, of how this great land rose and fell, and became what it is now. Allow me the pleasure of your company, and I will lead you through these luxuriant lands, spinning stories of times long since past. I had a good feeling about you. Someone who cherishes a good story. Let us proceed. The first stop on our tour begins across the bridge behind me. Alas, there is one small problem. That area is favored by our enemies. If you can clear the area of them, I will follow and join you.